Today's video is gonna be all about my 1991 Honda Civic SI hatchback. A lot of you guys already know exactly who this car is, and I say who because it most certainly has a personality of its own. But if you haven't been following the channel for a long time, you might not know everything about this car and what all has went into it to get it to basically what it is today. And that's the reason for this video. I'm gonna go over everything that we've done to the car, everything that it has internally, engine, etc. And of course, every single bit of it can be found right here on Deadbeat Garage in some of our older videos. I will pre-warn you, as you start to get a little bit further back, the videos are a little bit cringy. We'll start off with the chassis itself. I have actually owned this car for about seven years now, I wanna say. It was around 2012. I actually got it and it is just a 1991 Honda Civic SI. The car used to be Tahitian Green Pearl and I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate once you find out that I painted over a Tahitian Green Pearl SI. But let me explain, man. The car was in rough condition. The paint was in rough condition. There was a lot of little door dings and everything. Uh, and honestly, I got the car because it was Tahitian Green Pearl. That was one of my favorite things about it. The only thing I did not like about the color is honestly, you can go to a car show. I don't care where you're at. doesn't matter what state, what city. If there's another EF there, the chances of it being Tahitian Green Pearl are pretty freaking high, dude. I just wanted something different. And this is different. Okay, so this khaki color, while I'm not gonna give you guys the color code, I know a lot of people ask for it, I'm not gonna give it to you, man, I'm sorry. But I will tell you that this is one of my favorite colors. I've always liked that khaki, tan type of color. I've always been a big fan of it. And the hatch is actually not the first vehicle that I've owned that I have painted this color. I actually owned a 1971 Chevy K5 Blazer, which was my baby. I tore that thing completely down uh, whenever I first got it. Funny thing is, it was also a blue color. Uh, I mean, Tahitian Green Pearl is not blue, but it's kind of in the same realm. But I tore my blazer all the way down and I completely painted it inside and out and it was basically like a resto mod, the same kind of way as the Khaki Civic. And as you can see from these pictures, it was the same like color combination even, man, with the black accents, all the exposed hardware, uh, the little like plate on the back with all the rivets, I made that myself. I know a lot of you guys probably didn't know that and that's probably the first time you're seeing it. But yeah, bro, there was a khaki blazer and I freaking love that thing. And I, that's actually what I got rid of in order to get the khaki Civic originally. As for the interior of this car, as you can see, it's completely gutted. Um, it's not finished. There are a few other things that I would like to do, like maybe even put in a passenger seat. But things like little covers, like where the fuel sending unit used to be, uh, and obviously we need to add an e-brake. Things like that I do want to finish up. I'm not done with the dash, but the car is completely gutted, and we did some pretty extensive weight reduction on it. Put all the holes in the door seal. There are holes drilled in the pillar here. 
uh, going all the way across the back. And even in the back uh, surrounding the rear hatch, there's just a bunch of little holes drilled. I mean, now obviously it didn't save like 100 pounds doing all these holes. And a lot of people will argue that I have made the car unsafe and took a lot of structure out of it, but man, you're wrong, I'm sorry. It's no more unsafe than what it already was, man. But the door bars are actually cut out of the doors. The doors are all completely gutted. Uh, we deleted the sunroof. As for these aluminum door panels, which we also continued the holes drilled in the bottom, just you know to tie in with the rest of the car as well as the uh, floor mats that are aluminum and covered with skateboard grip tape and even the little panels that are in the back these were all done basically just for looks man just to have like that that gutted but kind of a complete look i don't know exactly how to put it in the words man i just wanted it to be a little bit cleaner and make it look kind of a kind of presentable you know what i mean carrying on with the weight reduction we also have all lexan windows in which all of these were also fabricated here on the channel and as for the lexan windows all the aluminum panels inside of the car as well as the floor mats and the aluminum block off for the sunroof and even this rear uh street drag wing whatever you want to call it there are full step-by-step do-it-yourself videos on every single bit of that stuff in which I'll most certainly put in the description down below um, if you want to check them out. But like I said earlier, they're kind of some older material, so they are a little bit cringy, but they are some pretty good tutorials, man. If you'd like to make any of that stuff for your car yourself, and it is pretty damn universal. It's not just for an EF hatch. Obviously some of the steps will, will change or be altered uh, as far as shape for a different car like EG, EKs, Integras, whatever. But to finish off the interior, we do have a one piece bucket Momo carbon fiber seat and I do have both of them. That's the passenger one over there. I'll give you guys a little bit of a closer look at it. I mean, they're not something crazy fancy. At one time, these were some pretty damn baller ass seats in which I guess you can say they still are. I mean, they are still nice, but they are expired. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I do have a no name X bar in the back. I believe this is just kind of an eBay setup. I don't know. I bought this off my cousin. He used to have an EF as well. And what this is, is it goes to a 92 to 95 Honda Civic hatchback at EG. But to mount it inside of an EF, you just have to put it in upside down, dude. As simple as that. And when doing so, as you can see on this little mounting bracket, like we had to move the hole down and redrill a new hole. But nothing too crazy that an average do-it-yourselfer can't figure it out, man. So yeah, if you have an EF and you want an X bar in the back, just order one for a 92 to 95 hatch. Install it upside down, you're good to go, bro. I do have a harness bar. I know it's very controversial. These things aren't safe, blah, blah, blah. But without it, I would have had absolutely no seatbelt. So um, it's a lot safer than having no seatbelt at all, I believe. This is my personal steering wheel. It always sounds funny to say that because it is my personal steering wheel and it uh, is also the brand personal. And it is paired up with a NRG uh, slim hub. I don't know what it's called. Either way, energy quick release. And that basically, you can stay there. That finishes up interior. Other than the fact that we obviously got a little push button start and a bunch of random switches, which is like ignition and fuel pump, fans, etc. I got my wideband gauge mounted right here to the left of the gauge cluster. I have a stock gauge cluster in there. Nothing spectacular. And over on the passenger floor is my little electrical plate, I guess you can call it. I don't know. It's got my ECU on it. It's got my breaker switch and my relay for my fan, relay for my fuel pump, and a distribution block for power. Now, as far as suspension, I have Skunk 2 Pro Series coilovers that I desperately want to upgrade. Uh, I definitely want to get something a little bit nicer on the car. Um, I've had those for freaking ever uh i mean they're not blown or nothing but definitely could be better there is a skunk 2 camber kit in the front uh the upper control arm you guys all know uh some no name uh camera kit in the rear as far as brakes and wheels it is five lug converted i'm not going to get into that uh if you guys want to know more about that i'll i'll make a completely separate video but uh, the wheels are factory BBS's that come on an FC RX-7. It does have NSX brakes. 
The calipers front and rear are NSX. Uh, as far as the rotors, out back, it is the NSX rear rotors, but in the front, these are actually Integra Type R rotors. The braking on this car is freaking crazy. I'll tell you one memory I have of a guy pulling out in traffic in front of me, and it took me by surprise, and I had to slam on the brakes. The front and the rear both lock up. They both lock up whenever you slam on it uh, because of how big the brakes are in the back. And to be honest with you, that's kind of dangerous, bro. So I do need to do something about that. I'm thinking about some kind of um, adjustable regulator to where I could take less braking power from the rear and put more towards the front. I don't know. I'm, that's something I'm going to have to research later. The front does have the stock sway bar. And the rear, I forget what size this is, but it does have an ASR rear sway bar with the ASR subframe brace as well as the adjustable end links. And there you can see those Skunk 2 Pro Series coilovers I was telling you about, and it doesn't have the height adjustment, and that is one of the bigger reasons why I would like to upgrade them. And obviously, it's got some billet aluminum lower control arms, but to be honest with you, I have no idea what brand they are, so. I will tell you that this car definitely feels like a damn go-kart, bro, because it, it doesn't weigh anything. It literally weighs nothing, and having that big-ass sway bar, the stock sway bar in the front, and a decent suspension setup, the thing feels stiff as shit, and it's it's just ridiculous. And another thing, as far as that X bar, just to touch back on that, when I first put that in the car, that made a ginormous difference, dude. Huge freaking difference. Going up curbs, I wouldn't pull the three-wheel motion, uh, and then after... After putting the X bar in, just going up a curb a little bit sideways would pull a wheel completely up off the ground. So that definitely helps stiffen up the chassis tremendously. Damn, Mark, my bad, brother. Holy shit, I completely forgot the centerpiece of my interior. And that is the NPC Motorsport and Honda Street Garage collaboration shift knob, bro. Number 0, zero of 50. I would say I'm special, but I think like 20 people have 0, 0, 50, but it is what it is. This thing's fucking sick. I love it. Gotta keep it tight. Stay tight. Now, of course, what you guys are all waiting for, I know this is what everybody wants to know about, is what is in the engine, man. Um, a lot of you guys have, have been commenting about like how the car sounds. Um, and the idle, that real aggressive lobe that it has. And honestly, I mean, it might, it might have something to do with the fact that it is running hella rich right now. I don't know, but it is cammed and we're gonna get into that here in a second. The only thing that sucks is I can't show you guys inside of the engine, but the only thing I can tell you is in the description down below, I will include the links to all the videos where you can find, like coming from the machine shop, uh, going over the the engine when it was all disassembled and showing you guys all the actual internals of the engine But of course since the car is all put together. I can't do that here starting off with the block This is a b20 z2 that I got from a good friend of mine named Shiloh You guys might have heard of him now, the b20 z2 comes from the 99 to 2001 I think it was Honda CRV from factory they come with a 9.4 to 1 compression ratio uh, in which it no longer has that because we don't have the same pistons and rods in there the Block has actually been bored a little bit larger than stock. It is at 84.5 millimeter um, And as far as pistons, I have b16 replicas in here that are actually made by Nippon These are Nippon p30s, which is basically a b16 replica. They're not they're not B16 pistons to say, but they do replicate the dome of the B16. But now with those pistons at 84.5 millimeter matched up with a B16 head. Now this is a PR3 head. That is the casting for B16 and or Type R. This car once had a Type R in it in which that is the block that is sitting underneath my counter over here for future plans. But the compression ratio right now is sitting at about a 12.9 to 1. But we have also shaved the head down. Uh, the block has been decked. So I think it's safe to say that we are sitting right at about a 13 to 1 compression ratio. Which is pretty high, man. If you guys know anything about that, um, obviously I can't run off of pump gas anymore. I mean, it, it could. But 
The danger of detonation is a lot higher whenever you're running that high of a, a compression ratio. So this car is running on E85. Now with the P30 pistons, there are also SCAT H-beam rods and the whole entire rotating assembly was balanced at the machine shop. And that is obviously whenever they take the whole entire rotating assembly and they balance it, they shave little bits here and there to make sure the whole thing is balanced, bro. And that is so to avoid from a lot of vibration at higher RPMs so that it's a little bit safer. Of course with that, I have all the ARP bolts for the connecting rods, ARP head studs, and getting into the head itself, we have Crower dual valve springs, Crower titanium retainers. Uh, there's also Crower flat faced valves in there, which does actually up the compression ratio ever so slightly. So that's another reason why I think that we are probably closer to a 13 to one, maybe even slightly higher, man. I don't know. As far as cams, this car is running a set of Skunk 2 Pro 2 series cams. And with that, um, I also, match that up with a set of Skunk 2 Lost Motion Assembly uh, LMAs. And that replaces these little things inside of the head. These things like to get stuck and just basically cause a lot of valve train chatter. Uh, yeah, these just these factory ones just aren't reliable, so that is the reason why I upgraded to the Skunk 2 LMAs. Now, once again, I have an entire video going over that and installing those, in which that will also be in the description down below, guys. So now, the only other thing to really mention about the internals of the engine is there is a block guard. Um, I did not have the cash to put up to have the engine actually sleeved. Believe me, I would have loved to. But, I mean, at the time, what I could afford was a block guard, and that's what I have pressed into there. Um, so, I mean, hate it or love it, it is what it is. Every single little bit of protection, I think, helps. Uh, we are running a catch can. Uh, this is Dash 10 AN line running to uh, the breather ports that are on the back of the block. So there is a catch can set up to relieve the crankcase pressure. Uh, obviously an Edelbrock Victor X intake manifold. This is a 70 millimeter uh, Skunk 2 Alpha Series uh, throttle body. Three and a half inch intake with a six inch velocity stack back there. Uh, this is a vibrant intake filter that is actually designed to go over the velocity stack. So um, at the track, I don't have it yet, but we did not weld the velocity stack to the pipe so that I can go ahead and put a coupler on here and run a pipe out the headlight. I'd have to remove the headlight, obviously. Put the velocity stack in the front so whenever we're running on the track, we can just cram a little bit more air into there. Uh, shit, what else? Obviously, I'm running a sandwich plate on the back where the filter goes that is supplying oil to the head through the uh, B20 VTEC conversion kit that I have on here. Other than that, I got a bunch of MPC Motorsport uh, stuff all over the place just to make everything look a lot nicer. We have an AEM high flow fuel rail, and this is an RS machine, the freaking old school fuel pressure regulator right here. I've had this thing for quite some quite some time. And uh, then obviously a fuel pressure gauge so that we can see what our fuel pressure is. I'm running jumper harnesses right now and then I still have yet to have tucked all this. A lot of the engine harness kind of still needs to be cleaned up but honestly I'm really not all that worried about it. As far as the transmission, this is a JDM S80 transmission. It's basically a JDM GSR. It does have the factory LSD inside of it so we won't be uh, one tire firing, you know what I'm saying? Um, when I first tore this car down, that's one of the very first things I did. Everything inside that transmission that showed any signs of wear whatsoever got replaced. So all the sync rows, there were some gears that were replaced. Also there is an LS fifth gear inside of there so that whenever we're on the freeway we can kind of keep the RPMs down a little bit lower. Also get a much higher top speed, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if I'll ever do that, but maybe. As far as cooling, I have Mishimoto rubber hoses. This is just like a no-name aluminum radiator, but it works great other than the fact that it's leaking all over the damn place and I need to replace it. Um, we do have Mishimoto slim fans in the front because unfortunately that's the only place I was able to fit them because of how close the header is. The header is a tri-y big tube header. Uh, obviously it's a four to two to one. This is the, the cheapest big tube header that I can get basically and we have it header wrapped. Every single bit of that all has its own videos as well. I don't know if I'm gonna put every single one of these videos in the description down below, but 
If you go through the channel, man, you can find every single bit of this stuff. If you want more details on anything that I'm talking about here, every single bit of it, just scroll through the videos on the channel. You could find absolutely all of it. There's nothing on this car that I have done that was not done on video other than shaving the bay and drilling all the holes inside of the car and doing the leds on these uh that's the only stuff that basically i did before i actually started a youtube channel so back to the transmission it is a hydro transmission obviously so this car has a full hydro conversion in which this came from import powerhouse uh, it's a local shop here. It's not like a Hush Performance kit or anything. Uh, this is a really, really old kit that's been around for a long time. And it's been on this car for uh, seven years or so. So anyhow, uh, as far as fuel system, this is a Speed Factory two gallon fuel cell that we have mounted over here on the side. This is my return. That's coming down from the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's an AEM high flow fuel rail. I have blocks, 1000 cc injectors in here. That's way too big of an injector for what we actually need because this is an all motor car. But I figured may as well just in case I want to up, you know, up the power later, whether I run uh, a turbo or nitrous or something. Anyhow, a uh, Dash 8 AN PTFE feed line. Uh, that's a Dash 6 return line. And the feed line runs down here, which the fuel pump is mounted in the front, and it's a Bosch 44. And then that runs directly through the filter, and then obviously over into our cell that is behind the bumper here. Other little details, I guess, um, there's Skunk 2 adjustable cam gears. I ran a com Cometic uh, head gasket. The car has a brand new distributor on it. That <laughs> These things are expensive, so you know what? It's worth mentioning. Uh, the alternator is also brand new. The axles are brand new. Uh, all the ball joints on this car are all brand new. Like, basically, this build... Uh, everything is either in perfect working condition or it has been replaced with something brand new. So hopefully we don't have any problems. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that I think I missed as far as covering is the clutch. I have a competition clutch in here. It is their stage four. It's basically as high of a stage of clutch that you can get before getting to the multi-disc clutches in which we didn't we don't need a, a twin disc or anything for this i don't think i don't see us making much more than like 230 horsepower uh, i mean that's kind of where it is that i'm shooting for like 230 240 i would really like to see 250 but i have my doubts i don't i don't think we're gonna get up there Honestly, I'd be happy if we can just hit like 220, you know what I'm saying? This car really, really don't weigh anything. And whether it's the fastest thing in the world or not, to be honest with you, I'm really not all that worried about it, man. I know it's going to be a fun-ass little car, and that's all that matters, dude. Yeah, it is a six-puck sprung clutch, and I do have the, the double the clamping power pressure plate in there. That's an option that you can choose from competition clutch to get double the clamping power, which just means it has a much stronger clamp whenever you let off that pedal. Matched up with not only their lightweight flywheel, but I got their ultra lightweight flywheel. So it's their lightest flywheel that they have on the market. And once again, all that stuff was balanced whenever we had the, the whole rotating assembly balanced at the machine shop. Other than that, dude, I think that's pretty much it. Um, as far as ECU, I have a P28. It's got the Honda version 2 in there. Uh, that's what the car is going to be tuned on. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, that's pretty much it. Other than that, like, we have a carbon fiber hood, aero catch hood pins, uh, carbon fiber mirrors. I just installed these YCP side skirts. Uh, the, the actual side molding itself, that's all aluminum. And that was all built here in the garage, painted here in the garage. Again, once again, there's videos on all this stuff. These fenders, the cutouts, this was all done right here in the garage. Uh, once again, there's a whole nother video on that. I got amber corners because I dig the amber corners, amber front lenses. 
uh, I mean, I don't know, man. If there's anything that you guys want to know specifically other than what I've covered here, make sure to put it in the comment section down below, of course. Uh, some of the things I still need to do on the car is obviously we, I need to finish the Lexan windows because there's no windows in the door right now. And I'm also going to be custom making a piece of aluminum that's going to replace that factory little piece that covers all this ugly shit up. So that is future plans. Uh, this piece is actually going to be part of the mounting system for doing the Lexan windows. So I'm going to be doing all that at one time for the most part. All right, so it is now the next day. I know I said that I was gonna answer all the Q&A questions in this video, but dude, I'm editing. I was editing last night, and this video is 25 freaking minutes long, man. So shout out to you guys if you actually made it through this entire thing. Um, I know it's kind of boring sitting there watching somebody just talk, for 25 minutes but uh you guys wanted to know all the details on the car man so most certainly if you have any specific questions about the car throw them in the comment section down below i'm gonna end up doing the q a video uh completely separate because uh i i just didn't want to tack on to the end of this man because it's end up being like a 35 40 minute video bro just straight talking but anyhow um i almost certainly get the q a posted up here pretty soon uh make sure to post any questions that you may have in the comment section of this video as well at the moment my cousin is actually on his way we're going to be trailering the hatch down to a shop to go and get the alignment done so i need to get the back of this thing raised up because i am going to go ahead and go up probably about an inch in the back and i'm thinking i should probably take the side skirts off for the trailer dude i don't i don't think it's going to make it onto a trailer with those on there hopefully if we got time i'm going to hit the cat scale on the way back so make sure to put your guesses down below what you think this car weighs man remember completely freaking gutted i just i just showed you guys inside of inside and out um i most certainly think that it's below 2000 um i would like to be as close to 1500 as i can possibly be but i know damn well it weighs more than that um realistically my guess is about 1800 so i would like to see somewhere between 16 and 18 i hope it's not heavier than that Anyway, put your guesses down below. Put your questions and your comments down below. Peace out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was all talking. If you made it all the way to the end, make sure to comment hashtag DBFam in the comment section. I love you guys. Later.